what's up everybody welcome to the my rc life youtube channel where we do all things rc and a little bit of everything in between let's go what's going on everybody track this mic from my rc life last time we were out at the skate park I broke my Techno MT410 and my Traxxas Max. Today we're going to see if we can get them fixed. Alright, so on the Techno, I blew off my shock cap there. And because I landed so hard and then it popped the axle out, bent the axle and popped the sway bar out of its link. So first thing we're going to do is clean her up a little bit. This one was already leaking just a little bit, I noticed. So I almost wonder if it was starting to thread out of the top just a slight bit. It's hard to say. Pop that little shock right off of there. She is filthy. Got the spring cleaned up. Time to clean the rest of the shock body up. A lot of dirt got in these threads. Get a little bit of isopropyl in here. See if I can unscrew that adjuster. Pull it right off. Clean out the threads in that. Okay, we got that all done. Now these shocks are filled up with 700. Fill that up, cycle this up and down a handful of times, get all the air bubbles out of it. Sit this right in the old spring there, let that settle. Now I need to take top of my shock off here get this all cleaned up okay clean this up my rear a arm's got a bunch of shock oil on it too try to get it Cleaned up a bit. I'm gonna see if I can pop that sway bar on, and it did. It snapped right back on. That was the easiest <laughs> fix out of all of it, I think. Now, I might as well get this tire off because I gotta get that axle out so I can uh, straighten it. There's 
set screw in here. So I gotta get the set screw out first. Okay, got that set screw out. Now pull our pin out. Bam. Pull our hex off. And then the axle should push right on out. Bam, there she is. So we got this shock here now. I remember when I was putting this truck together, it said put a drip or two in here, then put the bladder up in the shock cap like so. Then go ahead and screw it on. And if you got the perfect amount of shock oil in there, it should squeeze out the side right there and bleed itself. Which it is. I need to get these upgraded. Um, I do have these. Um, aluminum ones of these here but I'm just going to wait until I got these two and I'll do them both at the same time but yeah I'm going to upgrade both of those alright that's on there Let's get her nice and tight okay nice and tight let's screw our adjuster back on there there we go finally got that sucker started on there the right way okay put our shock on there put the bottom on put this in there go shocks all back together now we got this bent axle I can crank on it with a hammer you can put it in a vise and tighten it down that's what I'm going to try first is putting it in a vise and tightening it down mm, looks like it's getting her pretty straight Okay, but when I loosen it up, it's probably going to rebound back just a little bit. Yep, it sure did. See, it's still got a little bit of a bend right there. So, if you lay it right down on like a vise here, you can see, see how when I roll it like this, it kind of comes down flat. When I roll it up like this, you can see air underneath it. So just grab your hammer. Bang it a bit. Set it flat again. Roll it around. Okay. Let's see here. Alright, that's going to be straight enough for now, guys. Now I'm just gonna kind of wipe this out a little bit more. Just trying to get all of that old shock oil that exploded everywhere off of the AA arm because it's just gonna attract dirt in the future. Wiping it out with a napkin, dump some isopropyl in there, get out the old bristle brush, scrub around, dab all that up, clean off the axle shaft a bit, using just an Allen wrench to shove the paper towel down in the nooks and crannies. Try to get as much of that crap out as I can. Okay, we got that all cleaned up. Now I gotta get the axle reinstalled. We're gonna go ahead and take this bolt out here so we can flex this down and out 
and then it'll let me get my axle reinstalled in there and also reinstalled in the hub there in the diff. Okay, I'll push this and back up here. Slide the hex back on, slide the pin back in with the bevel facing out so the set screw can fit in it there. A little drop of Loctite. Alright, that's in there. Put that shock pop down in there. Okay, slide that guy back on there. Put the nut back on. Last thing to do is get the tire on there. Okay, Techno is back together. Okay, now we got the Traxxas Max. Uh, I had a hard landing on this and uh, everything quit. I thought the battery had come unplugged again, but I came up and the battery was plugged in. The fan was running. The light on the ESC was blinking, but I had no um, control of steering or throttle. But I seen there was a light on in the little uh, sight globe there and was flashing on the receiver so if the ESC was unplugged I would think the receiver wouldn't have any power at all so I think maybe uh, I, I killed the receiver maybe I don't know but this should be a pretty quick fix Couple bolts, gets the first top lid off there. Three more, gets the whole lid off. Oh, something was unplugged there, I see. Look like the fan was unplugged a bit, but maybe other stuff was unplugged too. So I just shoved them all back down in there. Let's see if we have power now. Go ahead and plug that six cell in, fire it up. We got power. Okay. So I think what happened is I kind of partially pulled it out where it was getting um, power, but it wasn't getting um, power to the signal wire. It's the only thing I can think. It has to be what it was.
All right. Then, just kind of got to get those worked in there a bit. Get this top back on. All right, so let's double check this. Still working. Make sure it moves forward. Reverse. Yep. Now we're going to go ahead and fix our HPI Savage Flux. The other day I was having problems. I didn't have much steering at all. And the steering servo saver was uh, really wore out or it's really loose or something. Now I looked through my bucket of parts. I do have a brand new servo saver in here. So um, I can put that one on unless this one is in excellent shape and just needs to be tightened up. So let's go ahead and tear into it. The HPI Savage is a lot of Phillips screw heads. Another thing, um, this is a must do upgrade, I always say, to um, a Savage Flux. It's putting a bit of Velcro wrap or even a zip tie, something around here to hold these bumper pieces together. Okay, so now that I got the Velcro off, see these things right here? They hold these two pins in. See that pin right there and then another one right there? All of them are held in by these two little plastic things on this bumper. Well, if you don't have the Velcro holding this tight, sometimes these can flex out and then your pin can just slide out. So that's why I keep those held in with a bit of Velcro tape. Then back here, you got these two little guys right there. One on this side, one on this side. Get those pulled off. Now, these can just pop out like that. See that? No need to pull the Allen heads out of here. Flip it back over. These two screws on the side here. One here. And one there. Those need to come out. Pretty much got to take them all out. I didn't think I needed to take them all out, but I guess maybe I do. Two more. There we go. Now it all came out of there. Now this part here, this is the part I didn't think we had to pull out. So I'm going to go ahead and screw those back on because I'm pretty sure I didn't need to pull those out. And those two there, they screw in to that servo saver there. Now, I'm looking at the servo saver here, and it does indeed just look like it's very, very loose. If you look at this one, it's screwed down quite a bit, and this one was barely, I mean, just barely on the threads. I'm going to try to get these needle nose small pair of vice grips on that purple nut there. Yeah, there we go. I guess I may not have to replace it. There, now we got that spring compressed quite a ways. 
Now I say we reassemble this bad boy. Okay, tighten this down into the servo saver. Them ones are a fine thread, all the rest are like a coarse thread screw type thread. Two shorties. Long one up front. Two shorts in the back. Okay, now it's time to test. All right, let's see if it steers better. Oh, so much better. Now I'm going through and I'm setting my end points so the servo don't hit the end and just sit there and hum. So how you do that is you steer it till it hits the end there. Like right now I got it turned up. I'll turn it up to 120. So when I turn it to the right, right there is probably about as sharp as it can steer, but I ain't turned all the way. So I, when I keep turning, here it just keeps humming. So I need to back that end point down a bit. I know I need to take it at least to like 90. Let's see. Sixty-seven. It turns real sharp, but it don't seem like it uh, hums. But I, I'm gonna turn it all the way, and then hit the plus and see if the steering and see if the wheels turn anymore. So here we go. About eighty-five. It does hum a little bit, but it does get a little bit more steer if I ramp it up all right so basically uh, one side is 73 and one side is 83 boom that works good for me and that's in your EPA endpoint adjustments and then um, I got my steering dual rate at 100 um, if it steers a little too quick for you you can turn that rate down Seeing it ain't steering so quick. All right, guys. Well, it looks like I got all three of them fixed. I got the Techno fixed. I got the Max fixed. And I got the Savage fixed. All from my bashing the other day at the skate park. If you plan on going to the skate park, you better plan on at least breaking something. You always break something. Sometimes you break a little bit of everything. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for today. I'm Traxxas Mike from My RC Life, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching another episode of My RC Life. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.